All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am joined by Tracy Bissett, who is in Toronto in Canada. How are you doing, Tracy? I'm great. So glad to be here with you today, John. Yeah, and Tracy is on a mission to redefine the world's economic future by increasing the financial literacy of entrepreneurs, uh, also known as financial fitness. Uh, and you are the president, founder, president, and chief financial fitness trainer at Visit Financial Fitness. Uh, okay, so Tracy, when most people think of uh, entrepreneurs and people get into it, they would assume that they have some um, financial nows and and uh, and acumen before they ever you know launch their entrepreneurial career, um, but you're saying that's not always the case, right? Yeah, and I would say it's uh, predominantly in most of the cases it's not the case. Uh, most people are super passionate and skilled at whatever they're starting their business in, um, but up until you graduate from high school, the schools don't do a great job of teaching you mm -hmm. about money personally, let alone in a business scenario. And if you're taking uh, further schooling in a really specified program, they're generally not teaching you how to run a business. They're teaching you how to do whatever it is, whether you're going to be a graphic designer, uh, whether you're going to be an architect, whatever it might be, but they're not really teaching you about the finances of business. And so most entrepreneurs are unprepared. And anybody who's feeling that way, that's a perfectly natural and normal feeling. Yeah. And so and so obviously when you start your own, you know, or start your own business and there are a lot of things that suddenly come your way that maybe you're not expecting. So what are some of the what are some of the biggest mistakes that you see entrepreneurs make when it comes to finances? So it's a couple of the big ones. The first is kind of ignoring it, thinking that the money is mm -hmm. going to take care of itself. Uh, the second is thinking you're taking care of it by hiring that bookkeeper and accountant and then never looking mm -hmm. at the numbers. So you are the CEO of your business. Even if you're a one person business, you can only reach your goals if you understand your numbers. So you can certainly have those people help you, uh, but you need to be responsible for what those numbers say. Do you understand them? Can you use them to chart that path to your goals? And so those would be two of the big ones that I see most common yeah and i guess that uh, that the one the, the first mistake you talked about you know maybe there where you hire somebody like you hire a bookkeeper or, you know or accountant or whatever maybe you outsource that maybe you know it's part-time or whatever mm -hmm. and and you assume maybe that they are going to provide you with financial advice and business financial advice but that's not really what their role is at all no, they're just recording the transactions and they can only record them as well as you explain your business to them. So mm -hmm. if you want to see sales broken out by geography or your product or your service along those lines, you need to give them direction. They're going to do what they know to do, but it may not be how you want to be able to use the information. So it's really important that they learn about your business from you. You ask them questions about the numbers and then when you get the reporting, you actually read it and you do ask more questions so you can refine it. So it's, um, it's a journey. Uh, entrepreneurs shouldn't be too hard on themselves. They should mm -hmm. take one step forward every day and build on their knowledge and uh, trying to learn it all at once will be a, a recipe for disaster, I would say. Mm -hmm. But if you're always moving forward, um, you can certainly increase your, your financial acumen. No, absolutely. But there's uh, but there's lots of tools and and uh, that you can use to help you nowadays. So what are some of the what are some of the tools that you need in order to be able to properly understand your financial position? So if you're just starting out, like I don't recommend people go right away to a complicated accounting software. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with using Excel. If that's going to be something that you're comfortable with and you can quickly see your numbers and keep track, do it that way. We want to make sure people are using tools and systems that work well for them. Business starts to get a little bit bigger. I'm a huge fan of QuickBooks. Um, certainly mm -hmm. it has the ability, you can um, scan your uh, receipts, get them in there automatically um, for your bookkeeper if they're doing it or, or you're doing it yourself. Um, but that way then you can start seeing your numbers. It's going to run them for you. Um, and then I'm a huge fan of cash flow forecasting. And uh, if your business is relatively small and basic, you can even do it on a piece of paper just mm -hmm. to get started. And cash flow forecasting is all about how much money is coming in, what's going out, the timing that it happens. And it's not more complicated than that. Uh, in your head, you might make it more complicated but, than that. But just think about, I sell something. Does my customer pay me right away or do they pay me later? Okay, if I have some employees, when do I pay them? And is there going to be enough money on that day? And, and so on. So keeping it basic is really key. Yeah, and I think that's always one of the toughest ones is just the whole cash flow management because you can, as you say, you can maybe 
think that you're doing pretty well, that you're you're selling stuff. However, the lag between the cash coming in and the cash going out suddenly causes you maybe problems that you didn't anticipate. Absolutely. And I was a banker for many years in commercial lending space and in risk management. So I approved many loans for companies over the years. And I've seen businesses go out of business in as quick as 90 days. If the only money is going out and nobody is paying you and you don't have access to credit and you don't have backup cash reserves, uh, it, it can happen very, very quickly. Um, the other mm. thing I see that really impacts cash, if people haven't done a deep dive on how much it costs them to deliver their product or service, uh, they think that increasing sales is the key. And if you increase sales on a, a losing um, a product or service, you're just going to mm. magnify the loss. So it's really important when you're small, make sure you're pricing it appropriately. Some businesses automatically will have that scale they've got to get to potentially if it's a product base, but make sure you're profitable before you drive the sales uh, full steam ahead yeah. so that's a, so that's an interesting point there because i do think that sometimes um you know people i mean and this actually is not just entrepreneurs this is sometimes large companies as well is that they don't <laughs> yeah. they don't do a good job of actually uh, calculating the real cost of delivering something often there's all these additional costs like time and focus and all of that that they don't calculate in um so uh, i mean it's obviously very, very tempting, especially an entrepreneur or a small business, to over-service something when you sell it, mm -hmm. right? And not calculate in that cost. For sure. And um, service-based industry, I see it predominantly. Uh, entrepreneurs forget to give value to the time that they're spending to mm -hmm. deliver their yeah. service. And so all of a sudden they look and they're actually at negative amount per hour they're earning. And then mm -hmm. they don't understand why there's no money for them to get paid. Um, so what I normally suggest is Think about the costs that go into delivering your, your product or your service. Add them up, the ones you have to spend um, because you're delivering. Then think about those other costs in your business. You've got to pay your utilities, your internet, whatever it is, whether you sell anything or not. Uh, make sure you're getting paid and your time is in there. And then what would be a reasonable uh, profit you might like to make? Once you add all that together, then you've got to look at the market. What will the market bear? Are you more expensive? Sometimes that's okay if you're adding something that's more valuable and you're positioning it to the market that way. Um, but if you're way out of whack with what the market will pay, um, you want to revisit that. And so um, having a business plan before you get launched or um, either in business or if you're launching a new product and service is important so that you work all that out before you start running down that road. And obviously, one of the big temptations is uh, that you run after any type of business at the beginning because it's just you just want to get sales, and then mm -hmm. rather than stay focused on on where your real what your real target is and where you can make the biggest impact. For sure. And um, so I have uh, some clients who feel that they will need to start out charging a little amount and then they can increase it. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, if your target is really up here, and those are the people you worked best with, and those are your niche charge what's appropriate for them and go after them. Um, there's no need to be building up kind of over time to increase your price if your your target client does expect more service and they will pay more. So go for go for it uh, in a very targeted way. Yeah, I, don't know, I guess a lot of it is to do with, uh, you know, having that confidence to start out at the gate, uh, you know, going after your target, because maybe it'll take a little longer. So maybe you need to, you know, from a financial point of view, maybe you need to allow yourself... Um, a longer runway before you're profitable. Absolutely. And part of building that business plan is thinking through what are all the things I'll have to pay. Okay. If I really think I'm going to get a customer in three months, let's just double that because things don't mm -hmm. happen as quickly as we would like. <laughs> things usually cost more. They take longer than we expect. So plan for that, have a buffer so that you're not feeling super stressed because people are going to know when you're trying to make the sale that you're really just focused on the money from the sale versus mm -hmm. serving them. Yeah. And obviously then you have things like, you know, pandemics that come out of the blue yeah. that nobody ex expects. So, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And I've, yeah. Um, I've been really fortunate to see a lot of clients um, who've been making the most of it and they've been mm -hmm. able to identify some areas where maybe they weren't serving um, people in a certain area of their business and have offered new products and services and it's been working well. So I've been really um, inspired to see people make those modest pivots and um, really capitalize on the opportunity and, and still bring value to their clients in a different way.
Yeah, because it's amazing how, because I mean, in good times, uh, you know, good times paper over a lot of things. Um, when things get tough, it's, it's uh, you know, it can get you very focused and get your creative juices flowing. So um, yeah, there's, mm-hmm. it's great to see some people who are, who are actually, this is in some ways, this has helped them really focus on where they can create the greatest value and maybe even uh, evolve their business somewhat. Um, so, um, so you said uh, you were obviously in a banking background as well. Mm-hmm. And let's face it, most most entrepreneurs and, and small businesses at some stage are going to have to go and access capital, right? Uh, so, how do you put yourself in the best position possible from a lender's point of view? Uh, so, my my first piece of advice is: as soon as you are starting your business, you need to establish credit for your company. Um, so that's getting, you have your bank account, you're going to get either an overdraft or a line of credit. You should be establishing credit cards. And at the beginning, if you don't have a track record in the company, it's going to be pers- based on your personal credit score mm-hmm. and that's okay, but you've got to start that timeline. So now the credit history can start on the business. Also really encourage people to, um, get a small, even term loan where they pay it back monthly. Even if they're just getting the money into their account and making those payments with it, they're establishing that credit history. Um, The absolute worst time to find a banker is when you absolutely need them and you're in a dire strait from a financial position. You want to build up a relationship with them uh, to find somebody that you think you'll work well with because it is important to build the relationship. Get referrals from other entrepreneurs that you know of somebody that they deal with that they know and trust. Um, date them almost, uh, like go on a couple Mm. first dates, find somebody that speaks to you in a way that you like, that you think you can have a good relationship with. And when you're going there, really important to remember, they're not your best friend. You don't go there to their office and cry on their shoulder and tell them all the worst case scenarios of everything that's going on. You do want to be transparent about your business plans. Mm -hmm. And certainly if there have been challenges in the past, what you've learned from them, how they won't be repeating, how you're, you made changes in the business. So you want to be transparent and honest and really demonstrate your credibility um, as a financial manager and leader of the business. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's great, great advice. I like that. I like, I love that piece about, you know, you don't want to go cry on your shoulder because it's not really great if you're going looking for a loan and you're coming in and going, oh my goodness, everything is awful right now. It's not, not probably not the best way to approach it. Uh, but it's interesting. I like what you said as well about that idea about even taking out a small term loan, even if you don't need it immediately and just um, repaying it and just using the money to repay it to build up your, build up your credit. These are the kind of things that maybe Uh, don't spring to mind uh, immediately for a lot of people. Absolutely. And I mean, I was uh, in risk management at the last financial crisis, 2008. Uh, The companies I know that performed well and continued to survive and thrive during that time, they were sitting on cash reserve. So it's always best Mm -hmm. when you can keep some cash around. And um, the ones that were over levered that just had too much debt, um, that that was hard for them. So uh, trying to keep debt at a manageable level. And I certainly believe that cash flow, money, debt should all be used as a tool to help you reach your goals. I don't think we should be using debt in excess. And um, but we, if we can use it to to help us reach our goals, we should do so in a, a conservative, reasonable way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then are there things that are there sometimes there's things that you know entrepreneurs are doing you know right um, with their money, maybe things that they don't realize they don't give themselves credit for because they're just running around trying to keep all the, the wheels turning. Absolutely. So uh, nine times out of 10, when I start working with a the client, they'll tell me, I don't know anything about the numbers. I don't know anything about cash flow. There's nothing that I know uh, about this financial piece. And once we start talking, um, the thing that I realize very quickly and I'm able to share with them, and it's usually one of the first meeting we have is this quick win where if you've been in business for more than a couple of months, uh, you know how to manage cash flow mm-hmm. because you're still in business. So you may not describe it with the words that I do. You may not write it down. You might be doing it all mentally in your head and you're juggling moving money around your accounts. But if you are still in business, you do know how to manage cash flow. And so I like establishing that really quick win, boosts the confidence. And it shows that now there's possibility to learn and kind of tackle the other things uh, because you are doing something well that most entrepreneurs don't realize at first. Yeah, I'd say there's a lot to be said for survival, right? I mean, you, yes. you need to survive before you can thrive, and uh, and I think that's a that's that's a perfect analogy. Yeah, that some people may think uh, may think it's absolute chaos, but then you're saying actually you've survived, so therefore you are doing something right. For sure, as I mentioned, uh, businesses can go under in as quick as ninety days. So especially mm-hmm. you've been around for a few years, you are doing something right because you're keeping your business going. 
Yeah. And so just uh, just finally, what are some of the things that uh, that entrepreneurs really need to be accountable for? Uh, so number one is knowing their numbers, um, being responsible for the mm-hmm. direction of the company, using them to help move the goals along, um, setting the direction for any employees that may be there. Uh, I'm a huge advocate of doing the cash flow forecasting. And so you can use your accountant or bookkeeper to help you with that. But I do think it comes from the entrepreneur and thinking through, okay, I'm going to launch this campaign. These sales are going to come. What impact will that have on my expenses? And actually thinking it through. Um, the, the heavy lifting, setting it up, in the first place. Um, But then once you have it and you're monitoring it, you're using it, um, you can then look if you want to make a decision in your business that's going to have a financial impact, you can quickly plop a new employee into there with some increased sales and see in probably five minutes or less what's going on, what's going to be the impact, which is really great. And so the way that I think people should get into a routine uh, to keep this accountability is to have a regular money meeting with themselves. Uh, If they do have accountant, bookkeeper, have that scheduled too. I would suggest starting on a weekly basis so that you get that discipline into your calendar, just like you have the discipline of the sale and you know you've got to make sales, you've got to look at your money and your finances and just set that time aside. The first few meetings may be just looking at your bank account, trying to figure out what's going on. And that's okay because you have to start wherever you are um, with that. And so to help your audience, I have a a money meeting agenda for them to get started. So you can head over to cashcoach.biz and download that. And that will give you a guideline of kind of where do I get started if I I want to take the first step today. So cashcoach.biz to get that money meeting agenda. Yeah, no, I think that's that's uh, that's fantastic advice, and also I think a little bit of uh, obviously you need to do some contingency planning because here's a, yeah. it's an unfortunate reality too, isn't it? With with solopreneurs or or small businesses, that sometimes you're going to be the last ones to get paid because people think, oh well, it's only I don't need to, you know, Tracy's not going to come after me. I can delay my payment to her, uh, even if it's like a third. You know, you have a net thirty yeah. days or whatever. So I think you also have to build in a lot of contingencies just to be on the safe side. Absolutely. And as I said, everything takes longer. Everything costs more than you think. Mm -hmm. Unexpected things are going to happen. I mean, a pandemic comes along and and kind of throws everything on its head. So uh, the more thoughtful you are in your planning and the the longer um, you can see potential problems out in the future, the more sightline, the more options you can come up with. Then you have time to go maybe and get that loan from the bank. Maybe you get an investor, whatever it might be. Um, But the longer ahead you can see that there might be trouble coming, you can and certainly brainstorm a lot more options. Yeah, fantastic. All right, Tracy, listen, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing that advice with us today. All of Tracy's information will be in her contributor bio below this. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Uh, So I live in Toronto in Canada. Um, As I said, I was a banker, and um, my mission is really to help uh, young people and entrepreneurs make sense of their money. Uh, It's really my privilege to be able to take the mystery out of that. And uh, I love seeing the confidence as they start working through the the stuff with me and then they're able to see what they're capable of doing and really take control of their money, use it as a tool to grow their business. Uh, I have a dog, Rosie, and we love to volunteer uh, with uh, an organization or a therapy dog team. So in our spare time, we do that once a week with some seniors. So have lots of fun. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, Listen, thanks again, Tracy. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline SRM. See you all again soon. Thank you.